Networking is a value exchange. A lot of times, and I see like even like recruiters that I mentor and coach or people I've managed before, they go into the network and they go into the community about thinking about what they can take yeah. from the network and what they can take mm -hmm. from the community. And there's nothing wrong with that. You go out, you go network for that. So they yeah. get something, but also think about what value can I add yeah. to my network in my community? Because that's what it is, is a value exchange. Yeah. Anytime you go to a tech conference, anytime you go to a mixer, anytime you go to a, even a non-industry event where people are just around, mm -hmm. think about like, okay, yeah, you know, these people can do this for me, but what can I do for people? Yeah, exactly. Right? So for a recruiter, that's why I said you should be, you should be doing resume breakdown sessions like, like I'm doing. You should be um, coaching people. You should be doing the greater good. You know, that keeps your skills sharp. Yeah that keeps you in the know of what's really going on in the market because networking being a value exchange is, is deposits and, and withdrawals mm -hmm. you know and i feel like you know a lot of times people they withdraw from people way too much so as y'all know we're always talking about breaking into tech scaling in tech starting your own tech business and one of the key components of breaking into tech is actually knowing how to interview knowing how your resume should look knowing how to reach out and interact with tech recruiters hiring managers and others with the companies that you would like to work at so one of the most valuable pieces of that component is the knowledge that we gain from tech recruiters and let's take it a step further senior level tech recruiters we've noticed that our audience that you all prefer uh, you enjoy at least whenever we're talking to different tech recruiters so today we have a senior level tech recruiter that's recruited at a variety of different tech companies has a wealth of knowledge and information um is uh is friends with some of the tech recruiters that you've all seen on the podcast uh and so we thought that it would be incredibly valuable. Um, something that we were really excited about having is having this guest on today who is Bobby. Uh, so bro, thank you so much for being here on Tech is a New Black. Hey man, I'm happy to be here, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. So I'm hyped to have you here as well. You definitely came highly recommended. Uh, and so, yeah. So also for those of y'all that are in the Patreon community that are watching the stream right now, I know that a lot of y'all have questions that you want to ask. So again, y'all don't have to wait until this airs publicly for everyone else. Uh, you can actually start go ahead and getting ready to post your questions in the chat right away. So that way in the end, uh, Bobby and I can address the questions that you all have exclusively for him. So, um, Bro, yeah. So, man, so hyped to have you, dude. So, bro, let's let's go ahead and jump straight into it, man. Let's do it. So, so just a list of some of the different tech companies. What are some of the different tech companies that you have been a recruiter for? Yeah, sure. So, um, one company that I worked at was called Pentair. They make, like, mm -hmm. water quality systems. A lot of the filters and filtration systems that you find, like, in pools, spas, um, even in, like, you know, restaurants or even in your own home. You know, we had engineers that made all of those. So I was a tech recruiter. I did all the R&D engineering, but also all the tech, right? So a lot of their products were could be controlled through like a mobile app. Yeah. So yeah, I was gonna ask how the I was like, okay, where's the tech component at? Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking like maybe okay, hardware tech, but okay, so the software you saying is yeah. mobile? Yeah. So the tech recruiting, so it was R and D recruiting, but then there was tech recruiting I was doing. So the okay. tech recruiting I was doing is like in this autonomous, you know. IOT, Internet Internet of Things type of world we live in, everything can be controlled through like a mobile app. Mm -hmm. So I was literally like recruiting like Android developers um, that were like, you know, developing these apps, connecting it to the cloud, connecting it to the IOT and collecting all the data. Yeah. So that was that was, you know, the, the tech recruiting I was doing there. Mm -hmm. um, then there was another company called Eaton. Uh, which is very very similar. They do, like they do like power management systems. Mm -hmm. So I was brought in to recruit their whole software division. Okay, right? okay. So now, so now you you went from it just being app developers to now, which app developers are software engineers to a degree as well. It's just yeah. they have a focus on apps. To now, just all software right. engineers. Exactly. So they had both like actual widgets, but they mm -hmm. also had like software products, right? Okay. That like actually could like, you know, like Android software back end, front end yeah. on their applications where you can control the systems, you know, from there. So I was responsible for all of their, what they call the digital footprint, their mm -hmm. digital division, right? So it was um, front end developers that I was recruiting for, back end developers, even some full stack people, mm -hmm. um, cybersecurity. I did a lot of that at Eaton. Yeah. Um, to secure the grid, the power grid. So that was a company I worked at. And also Amazon Web Services. Mm -hmm. um, I was a senior tech recruiter there. And basically, we all know what that is. That's the cloud, right? Yeah. So basically, those are a list of some of the companies I worked at. Yeah, we've had a couple, uh, uh, we've had a, 
Well, we've had one, no, two guests uh, who, who've been at AWS, who've been here, and one of them actually is a principal, um, uh, principal cloud developer. Mm-hmm. Uh, shouts out to Ed, um, who was on here recently, who dropped some really good nuggets and in, in gems. Uh, well, he, he's actually he's he's no longer there, but he used to work um, at, at uh, AWS and he transitioned on. So that's super dope. You know, this is a sidebar question, um, and this is a complete sidebar question. What are some of the pressures that a recruiter has to deal with when it comes to recruiting? Because I'm, I'm thinking about you saying, okay, you've been a, tech, a technical recruiter for these different companies. On one end, okay, you're a technical recruiter for a company where you were just over recruiting for people who are developing apps. But then the next company, you were over all of the software engineers, including cybersecurity. Mm-hmm. So it's like whenever someone, whenever people are not performing at a company, does that ever come back on the recruiter? Like, let's say it's like, okay, a volume of people that aren't performing. And it's like, right. yo, all of these people were recruited mm-hmm. through you. Is there any pressure that's placed on a, a recruiter? Well, I think like a, a, a great recruiter and a recruiter that's really, really passionate about their work. Mm-hmm. I think they definitely care about the longevity of the candidates they hire. Yeah. Right. One of the, I started my, the first half of my career was agency recruiting. Okay. And then one of the reasons why I made the transition over to corporate recruiting is because I felt like I was I had more stake in making a quality hire. Okay. So I take a lot of pleasure, and I can speak to a lot of other you know corporate recruiters or tech recruiters mm-hmm. who kind of feel the same way. I take a lot of pl- pleasure in my candidates doing well. I've had candidates that end up you know working their way up and became hiring managers, and next thing I know, I'm partnering with somebody I used to recruit. Oh, that's crazy! You know, trying to find them like a software engineer or a machine learning engineer. Yeah. So I take great pride in that, and I think I put you know a lot of onus on that mm-hmm. because I definitely want to see my candidates succeed not only in the interview but when you get here, right? Yeah. So that's one thing. In, in regards to the pressures, I think you know a, a lot of people don't know like tech recruiting, especially in, like in big tech. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you have to keep up with, and I think um, a, a good recruiter has to know the market. You know, you need to know where talent is migrating. Um, you have to know the different like like hubs, the tech hubs. Like, mm-hmm. why are people coming to Atlanta? Why are people going to DC? Why are people moving from the West Coast to the East Coast? Right, because your hiring managers are going to rely on you to know what's going on outside. So when you say why are people, are you saying why are tech companies doing that, or is a recruiter? like one of the things that's valuable for them to know is why are actual people like individuals moving to those yeah the the talent migration right so we have to help hiring managers and key you know decision makers strategize yeah and they rely on us to do that so you have to know what's going on in the talent market Mm -hmm. you also have to know what's going on financially Mm -hmm. right so when we're you know negotiating salaries or when we're going you know in front of an hr business partner or hiring manager on your behalf we have to know about inflation. We have to know what the economy is doing. So, mm-hmm. and then also on top of that, you also have to know, keep up to date on technology. You know, even when I was a manager and I was, you know, I still coach and mentor recruiters. Mm-hmm. A great recruiter, you have to at least be able to, to talk at a conversational level about the technology you're recruiting on. Yeah. Um, that you get buy in from candidates that way, but you also earn the trust of the hiring managers and business partners that you're collaborating with. Mm-hmm. So there's those things. And then also, you know, there's metrics. You know, just like uh, metrics for recruiters. Oh yeah, what what do some of those metrics look like? Oh man, like there's metrics around like um, days to fill. So like, right. like they have like okay, we want you to fill this role, um, and it with, needs to be filled by this date. By this date. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's a lot like a it's a lot like a sales position, man. really. You know, we want you to we want you to you know fill these amount of candidates, fill this amount of jobs by X Y Z days, yeah. or we want you to bring in these number of candidates. So it might be two hires per month. I had one job that was five hires per month. Right. Man. And it's, I guess, man, that's an interesting type of pressure because like you mentioned, it's sales, but it's, it's kind of inbound and it's not just, okay, we're trying to get people. It's like, we have people that are applying and interviewing, mm-hmm. but it's like, I could fill the seat with just anybody, but I can't fill the seat with just anybody. Exactly. Yeah. So it's quality, right? Yeah. So I mean, when you're when you're a tech recruiter, especially in big tech, you're a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. You're 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 a phone interviewer. You're you, you do you're a financial <laughs> analyst. You're a project manager. Yeah. You know, you're a diversity advocate. You you know you're man. you're a lot of stuff, man. Um, and a lot of people don't realize it's more than just interviewing candidates and putting them in front of a 
a, a, a hiring manager. Also, then you're like you're a coach. You're prepping. You're prepping yeah. candidates. You're trying to set them up for success. So it's a it's a lot of things that go into being that. Yeah, I think even someone like myself, I've I've done interviews before, mm -hmm. but I've never been a recruiter. And so I think when most people think about recruiting, even technical recruiting, they just think like what you just shared. They think like, yo, like you're just talking to the person, seeing if they're a pretty good fit. And if they're a pretty good fit, you put them in a the role, <laughs> not realize that all the other pieces that they come along with. That's why I know so many people that are like, I want to be a, I want to be a tech recruiter. And and I'm pretty sure they don't know all the pieces that you just shared that goes into it. Yeah, it's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, especially man. when you're full cycle. It's a lot that goes into it. Man, you got to be a negotiator. You got to be a closer. Yo, that's that's wild. <laughs> I, I didn't even know so much went into it, man. Uh, extra extra respect uh, goes out to you and um and other other um tech recruiters. So you talked about big tech. So you worked in big tech. You've been a recruiter for big tech. You've been a re recruiter for like small to medium sized tech. What are some of the differences? from your experience and some of the differences that you think would be good for people to know who are applying to big tech versus small to medium sized tech companies? No, good question. So like with big tech, um, just working in big tech or even being just a, a tech recruiter, mm -hmm. like there's, <laughs> there's always so much innovation mm -hmm. all the time. Like the, like the technology changes, the product changes. So in big tech, you gotta keep in mind, you're working around like engineers and technologists that's always thinking big. Yeah. Right, they they always you need to think big. Stop yeah. thinking small. Think <laughs> yeah, big. so you it's like just like the sheer ability to keep up because not only is their technology and their product is changing, but also the industry is changing. Yeah, so it's like it's fast paced. It's more fast paced, not only from a work standpoint, but from a, a technology and innovation standpoint. Versus, you know, some of the you know smaller or you know mid-sized tech companies. Yeah, they're innovating and yeah, they they have quality products. But I just see the biggest thing for me is just the um, the the difference in pace. The pace is a lot faster mm -hmm. across the board, no matter. It's faster in big tech. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then it is in some of the smaller, um, even though in the smaller mid-sized companies you can wear multiple hats. Mm -hmm. In big tech, you have your hat, but it's still like staying abreast of what's going on, and the learning curve is much more robust. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that being said, now that leads me to to the question of how did you grow and scale to being not just a not just a recruiter, not just a tech recruiter, but a senior tech recruiter in big tech? Because all of those pieces, it's like again, there are people who don't really know what they're doing when they're stepping into it. So I would love for you to share one kind of how you got into it, and two at at this rate in in this this day and age how others can like kind of follow in those footsteps yeah so my my journey um i've been a tech recruiter for 14 years Ooh. so man i've looked at resumes every day for 14 years yeah I do. and um i've uh set in a lot of interview debriefs uh, resume review sessions of my candidates and even people who weren't my candidates so i've seen a lot of things that make a candidate successful and go far in the interview process, mm -hmm. but I've also seen a lot of things that kind of repel a candidate from going far. Man. So I bring that I bring that experience, but I think one of the key things that kind of separated me and kind of helped me grow was paying attention to the trends. Yeah, not only in tech but also in my profession. Mm -hmm. And when it was time for me to you know go outside of you know the confines of my company and network. And, and talk to people and consult. I was like, wow, like you, you have a, a big knowledge base. Like, you know, could you maybe come, you know, talk to these people, talk to these people and kind of like share what you know. So that kept happening. I kept learning, kept growing. And like I said earlier, really learning the, 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 the learning the, the technology. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I can't go in and do any UI UX. I can't do any back end code. <laughs> You put me in front of Cali Linux, I can't pen test anything. <laughs> you know, but I, I gained the respect of the people who were the technologists. And that's how I really ultimately got into big tech. I got mm -hmm. recruited in um, because of the work I did and, and networking. I think that's a lot of that's one thing a lot of people don't put a lot of emphasis on is networking. Yeah. I had a great resume. I have a good resume now. Is you know, you can have a, the most optimal resume. But the being a subject matter expert in something 
and being able to network where people can kind of hear that passion and you're mm -hmm. able to put your knowledge on display. That's why I got a call from Big Tech. Yeah. You know, so and I, the, the way I got in is because somebody referred me. OK. Yeah. So I mean, and I think that's a big sleeper like 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 these companies do employee referrals. Yeah. So so you're saying even as a even in the recruiting uh, sub industry, there's value to networking. So that way you can get doors open up even to be a recruiter at certain tech companies. Yeah. Wow. I, you know, that's crazy. I guess many people think because we almost see recruiting tech recruiting as and, and again, obviously, there are different sub industries in tech. You have mm -hmm. pre-sales, you have, uh, you know, you have the cybersecurity, you have the product and you have recruiting. And it's but I guess most people kind of see it as like, OK, it's all of us. And then there are the recruiters, not like a, a weird separation, but like, OK, mm -hmm. y'all's experience isn't the same. But the more I'm listening to you, the more I've spoken to other people like Shanae, uh and other guests, uh, other tech recruiters. I'm realizing, man, it's extreme. Y'all's experience sounds extremely similar, like yeah. <laughs> extremely similar. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's that's really I think being a tech recruiter, I mean, if you're looking to get into tech, but you're not yeah. a technologist, I think that's a great way. Yeah. You know, we're HR, but the way I, how I've learned recruiting, just like just like in development as front end and back end. Yeah. In in tech recruiting or just in HR, actually, mm -hmm. that's front end and back end. OK, so. I look at talent acquisition and tech recruiting is the front end. That's the okay. front office. Like you're dealing with the people, you know, you're consulting, you're collaborating, you know, you're, you're, you know, working towards a goal. You're going to, you know, industry events, you know, career fairs, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Yeah. Versus back end HR is more like, you know, policy, procedure, garnishments, HR law, things mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I wasn't necessarily interested in. So you don't have to necessarily be real knowledgeable of HR. Mm -hmm. You have to have all those things that I mentioned before, project management skills, ability to communicate effectively, mm -hmm. um, the ability to um, learn, research, know your markets and things like that. Yeah. So, you know, if anybody was looking to, you know, get into tech and, you know, maybe not necessarily go to sales engineering mm -hmm. route or the SDR route, like mm -hmm. tech tech recruiting is a is a good launching pad. I had no you don't I had no tech recruiting experience before I became a tech recruiter 14 years ago. I was right out of college. They don't have a major I have a degree for Bro, tech you recruiting. You were a tech recruiter before I even knew what tech was. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's so wild. It's, it's been out for a while, you know, but it's yeah. just, it's grown so much. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's really kind of the breakdown with that. Man, so I try to do my best to have these questions prepared, uh, for one, for myself, but two, for Eric, so that way he's able to uh, know how to kind of cut these videos up better to make his job easier. But I can't help, I, I always have like real organic questions that like pop up, because I think mm -hmm. people don't realize I really enjoy talking to, I enjoy talking to the guests. I actually enjoy interviewing. I enjoy these conversations. Um, and so, so I have a couple like sidebar uh, questions that I have. Um, and so within tech recruiting, like there are certain roles in tech and I'm speaking just from my vantage point of what I see. There are certain roles in tech that are very secure almost recession almost layoff proof like cybersecurity, where it's like companies really need that security but then there are like other roles like you know let's say someone being a software just a software engineer and it's like, okay after the product is built it's like depending on what's happening with the company depending on what's happening in the market the company might or might not need that software engineer anymore and depending on like their tenure what are some things that a tech recruiter can do to really solidify their position at a company if the company's deciding, hey, we need to do some type of shrinkage or we need to do like a freeze. Like how can a tech recruiter at a company best set themselves up to be, I guess, almost like recession proof type of thing? Hmm. Cause question. I mean, bro, you've been in the industry 14 years, you've been killing it. You've made all types of moves. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yo, like I'm sure that you've seen recruiters Cause I like talking to you and talking to a couple other recruiters I met. I'm like, man, s s some of y'all take this very seriously, yeah. and I can see that. Yeah. So, what are some things that you think will be good for recruiters who are trying to scale and grow to where you're at, mm -hmm. and aspiring recruiters to do that could set themselves up one for success, but two to make themselves stand out even at their own company that that kind of brings them additional value. Yeah. I mean, besides, you know you know, performance, right? Besides, outside of like hitting your performance targets and everything like that, mm -hmm. 
I'm a real advocate for recruiters having a brand. Okay. Yeah. Like right now, like in 2023, like okay. the world is digital. You know, it is. you get everything. You can get to know somebody from a from an app. Like we all got a LinkedIn app on our phone. Yeah. Right. So I think one of the things is, you know, always making sure that not only are you adding value to the company, but you're adding value to your network and your community. Mm -hmm. And one of the key things I would say, like even with the recruiters that I mentor, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you want to, you know, want to be networking. Yeah. You know, I think recruiting is tech recruiting is a great role where you're almost, you almost have to network. Yeah. You can't really reach your optimal level really, in my opinion, if you don't network because and I was telling somebody this a, a couple of weeks ago. I actually posted something like this on my LinkedIn, but networking is a value exchange. Okay. Yeah. Do you unpack that? Yeah, yeah, sure. So a lot of times, and I see like even like recruiters that I mentor and coach or people I've managed before, they go into the network and they go into the community about thinking about what they can take yeah. from the network and what they can take mm -hmm. from the community. And there's nothing wrong with that. You go out, you go network for that. So they yeah. get something. But also think about what value can I add yeah. to my network in my community? Because that's what it is, is a value exchange. Yeah. Anytime you go to a tech conference, anytime you go to a mixer, anytime you go to a, even a non-industry event where people are just around, mm -hmm. think about like, okay, yeah, you know, these people can do this for me, but what can I do for people? Yeah, exactly. Right? So for a recruiter, that's why I said you should be, you should be doing resume breakdown sessions like, like I'm doing. You should be um, coaching people. You should be doing the greater good. You know, that keeps your skills sharp. Yeah. That keeps you in the know of what's really going on in the market. Because networking being a value exchange is, is deposits and, and withdrawals. Mm -hmm. You know, and I feel like, you know, a lot of times people, they withdraw from people way too much. Mm -hmm. You know what? What I guess what could so if we can give like an example. So okay, I'm a tech. I'm a technical recruiter. Um, I'm I'm new. I'm a new mm -hmm. technical recruiter. Um, uh, recruiting for, uh, I guess entry level entry level roles. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm at a at a at a tech event. What does what does me networking look like? Not necessarily people I'm trying to hire, but what does me networking? how can I network at the event to like make connections and what are some things I can say or share mm -hmm. with other maybe technical recruiters, hiring managers, or people at various companies that could be a value exchange of where I'm showing my value to them. You mean as a tech recruiter? Yeah. Yeah. So typically if you're at like a, a networking event, you're, you're looking to get candidates, right? Yeah. But also, you know, like, Hey, you know, if you need some help with your resume, let's talk um, off to the side and I can help you. Yeah. Right. Even if they can't do anything for your job slot. Yeah. You know, thinking about like the bigger picture, even mm -hmm. if they can't necessarily do something for your job, like, hey, you know, let me know. Like we can talk off to the side. We can go in the conference room real quick mm -hmm. and I can just kind of like, you know, run some things by you. Oh, yeah. You know, I've had plenty of people tell me, you know, coming up to a booth like, yeah, I just had a you know interview last week. It didn't go so well. So I'm looking and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm not necessarily hiring for a Java developer, but hey, I want to see you do well. You know, maybe we can set some time up and I can just kind of just riddle some questions by you. Yeah. Right. Or like That's even good. like partnering with like like going to the other booths, talking to the other recruiters. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, we're all competing for talent. But I think collaboration right now is necessary, especially amongst our people. It is. So it's like, hey, you know, what can I like? What can I help you with? You know, like, hey, I have this platform you know, let me help you get on, right? Like, what can I help you with? And let's help each other out. Yeah. So that's what that's what networking would look like. Like, if you go to that, it's a value exchange. Yeah. You know, like sometimes you're going to have to pour into people before they pour into you and vice versa. But make that's what that's what I would say the thing is. It's like, the, the, that's what helped me grow my career. Mm -hmm. And that's what I learned, you know, as far as like being able to maneuver. Yeah. I love it. I, when, you, when you said earlier, uh, it's not just what you can get from others, but like what you can add. It made me think about uh, like the political campaigns. <laughs> Ask not <laughs> what the tech industry can do for you, but what for you can do for the tech industry. Let me stop. Yeah. Uh, nah, bro. I, I love it, dude. I love it. Hey, y'all. We have some incredible, incredible news that I'm super excited about to finally announce our private tech community. Yes. Yes. You heard that right. 
a private tech community exclusively for you all who want more than just the podcast, you want more than just the FAQs, you wanna talk with tech recruiters, you wanna talk with, with hiring managers, you wanna talk with coaches, you wanna talk with people that can help with editing and rewriting your resume. Maybe you're somebody where you just wanna be a part of a community where we're talking about updates of what's happening in the software industry. Y'all, this community that we've launched is also going to involve a Discord where we're gonna be talking about updates in tech, we're gonna be talking about companies that are hiring, we're gonna be talking about upcoming tech events, so that way you don't have to miss any of the gems that I know, but not even just what I know, but the gems that friends of mine that are also in the tech industry know as well. So if you wanna be a part of that community, go ahead and sign up so that way you can join us. We have a few different tiers. Ultimately, it's all tuned in for you. Oh, and last thing, also within this community, we're gonna be streaming all of our interviews with our podcast guests. So instead of you having to wait months to watch the videos later on, you will actually be able to watch the interviews in real time and ask your live questions to those guests. So make sure you join our tech community. Man, so what are some tips and advice that you would that you typically because i mean i mean you help people with resumes mm -hmm. i mean shoot let's let's go through it J just on a high level you ain't got to share all the gems sure yeah because i want to i want to have you back on privately with the patreon community mm -hmm. uh and so you could share everything there but just on a high level what are some important resume tips that you could just share really quickly sure yeah so i think um uh, one key thing that i see that people do on their resume especially mm -hmm. in the experience section they focus so much on job duties and responsibilities, but not enough on impact. Yes, you need okay. to have job duties and responsibilities, but you should at least have one or two bullet points that speak about impact. Okay. Now, what does impact look like? Impact can look basically one or two ways. Metrics, right? So if you're in a sales role or you're in a role that was performance-based, you want to put in there what the metrics were, and if you met, a, met or exceeded them, you mm -hmm. want to put those in there, right? Yeah. So that's impact. Um, now, some jobs, some careers don't nec aren't necessarily measured off metrics. So another mm -hmm. way you you do that is through improvements, meaning did you bring a new idea into the company that they didn't have before? Yeah. And did you scale it up and did they keep it? Mm -hmm. And also did it save the company time, money? Did it improve efficiency? Yeah. Or did you take something they already had, which is basically continuous improvements? What I'm about to talk about. Mm -hmm. If you took something they already had, took the initiative to to improve it and build upon it and it saved the, the company time, money, et cetera, that's where you can show impact. So that's one thing that I see. Another thing yeah. I- So basically you're yeah. saying that it's better, and I just wanna uh, clarify. So it's instead of someone having something on their resume, oh, I did this task at this company, that they should also layer in there, hey, I did this task, the metrics were X, Y, and Z, I exceeded by this much. Mm -hmm. So they should not just say what they did at the company, their duty, but they should say how successful they were at it and right. either accomplishing it or exceeding it. Exactly. Yeah, that's okay. what recruiters want to see. The um, resume review sessions I've been with hiring managers consistently throughout my career, that's what they want to see. Yeah. Because like, it's like there's something, they're like duh bullet points. It's like, yeah, I know you did that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's what the job entails. Right. Yeah. I want to know how you succeeded in it. Yeah. How did you how did you yeah. how did you make impact? Yeah. Cause yeah. I'm assuming because you're dealing as a as a recruiter, you're dealing with a pool of applicants where many of them have all done the same stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to choose the best one out of them, you're like, okay, which one of you performed the best? And the only way to really determine that is by seeing the metrics that they, they Yeah. Do. And I'll be honest with you, as a recruiter, like before I even get the resumes passed over to the hiring manager, I'm looking, I'm going to preference the ones that have impact. Yeah. That I can see it. Those are going to be the ones that stand out. Those are the ones I'm going to want to get on the phone or do a virtual meeting and talk a little bit more about the impact bullet points on the resume. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. That I, Yo, y'all take, yo, this is a crazy tip. I hope y'all are taking this advice because I know most of our resumes have looked like that. I recently have uh, updated my resume to have those factors. I noticed a huge change in terms of like recruiters who saw it and them wanting to have me for like a third or fourth round interview. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge gem that I really hope y'all take to heart to not just put your duty, but to put the metrics that you either hit or exceeded in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, if I could, you know, name one more. Another yeah, one, do. another one, especially in tech, man. Like, especially in big tech, is the technical skills. Okay, man. So, I've seen this more so with people trying to break into tech, uh -huh. where they'll put technical skills on their resume. 
I'm just gonna say it that oh. they don't really truly have. Oh man! And here's and here, here's what I mean by that, and I, I this is what I always say. I say this all the time. Anybody who's been in a resume breakdown session with me, they know I say this all the time. Anything that you put on your resume, in your experience section, or especially in your technical skills section, is fair game for questioning and can and will be assessed. Mm. Big tech industry, they 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 they're really big on their technical skills. Yeah, they will assess you. Right. Sometimes the assessment comes before you even talk to anybody. Sometimes the assessment comes after you talk to the recruiter, but before the hiring manager. So what I what I mean by that is that. To me, a skill, a skill is something that you hone over time through okay. rigorous application. Yeah. So when you get into an assessment, you have to be able to do perform that skill with little to no supervision at at least a moderate level. Yeah. If you haven't done that. If you just got it on your resume just because you're trying to, you know, get at the top of the search. Yeah. Or somebody somebody told you to put it on there so you can get looked at. <laughs> best believe you're going to get in front of a recruiter like me. Or you go and even let's say on the chances of probability you get past a recruiter like me. You're about to get on the phone with somebody who does this for real. Man, you're about to get on the yeah, phone. Yeah, because after you, they're going to be talking to someone who mm -hmm. actually does that. Who's either going to be your teammate who's been in machine learning or cybersecurity for about five, six years, 11 years, or a manager who's been in the game for 21 years. Ooh. They're gonna they're gonna dive deep into those things. So I always tell people, like really think about the skills. Like if you've dabbled in it and you haven't touched it in like a year and a half, that's probably not a skill you should put on your resume. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about technical skills. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you because yeah, those are things you can you can lose it if you haven't been been messing around with it. Oh yeah, and yeah. like they they the the big tech industry and I don't fault them for this. They love assessing you. Yeah. You will get assessed in an interview. You know the interview could be three rounds. It could be in some companies. <laughs> it's five rounds. You yeah. gonna get assessed each and every time. So I would rather. I'd rather set people up for success and just really think about that. Like, can yeah. I do this at a moderate level with minimum mm -hmm. to no supervision? Like, okay, I, I used to play basketball in college. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like Kyrie Irving, for example, he's very skilled at ball handling, very yeah. skilled at finishing. That man's a beast. You can drop that man in any gym, anywhere in the world at any time, whether he's playing against NBA players dudes in your church league or YMCA yeah, he's the most he's one of the most consistent like it's any team he's on it's like he's just he's him he's going to he's, do his thing exactly because he's skilled okay he can do it anywhere anytime anywhere yeah right so think about that like with your skills can you do this anytime anywhere and can you at least do it moderately you don't yeah. necessarily got to do it advanced yeah but can you do it moderately because you get into these assessments and these interviews even if it's not perfect the hiring managers want you to explain how you got to what you got to on the assessment on the paper. Mm -hmm. So I just really stress that because I see so many people, like I said, you know, I've seen things, it's a consistent trend of things people do well and, and a consistent trend of things that people don't do well. Mm -hmm. And where I see a lot of people fall off early on is that they put skills in the technical skills section, whether it's like Java, Python, C, Node.js, UI, UX. But when it comes time to speak to those, and most importantly, when they put you in that in that environment, yeah. and you got to do that code, and it got to make sense, and it got to be logical, and that system design got to be where it's at. Like, just don't cap on your resume. Basically, man. what I'm saying, man. And I see that happen a lot. Yeah, no, I I, def I definitely believe it, uh, and and I'm sure it's it's so again, I, I've never had a technical role, so the things but i mean shoot i've i've had to do demos for you know because my, my background is a sales engineer uh I'm a, I'm a chief marketing officer now for a startup but my background in tech has been primarily being a sales engineer and some companies didn't have me actually do a demo for them but i started noticing the bigger name tech companies that were talking to me they were a set they were like okay we actually want to put you in a demo environment we want mm -hmm. and they wanted to throw me curveballs for yeah. the demo environment to see how well i was going to be able to perform yeah. so i could see that so i wonder in your opinion is it more generally speaking because you can't speak for every company but generally speaking based on your experience i guess do bigger tech companies tend to be more nitpicky or cautious in that way than small to medium size yeah i mean for the most part yeah 
Mm-hmm. There there have been like some small mid sized companies that definitely honed in on assessments and things like yeah. that. But big tech companies for sure. Like when you talk about like the main companies, the Moolah companies, like the, 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 those top fifteen to top twenty for sure. I've seen it more um, apparent there. Yeah. Um, some of the small tech companies they have come along though. Yeah. Um, like your startup companies because they're seeing the type of talent that these big tech companies are putting in there looking to replicate that. Yeah, exactly. So they, they've adopted some of those philosophies um, and, 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 and adopted some of those resources. So like I want, I, I don't, I think like, again, getting back to that, people putting those things on their resume, those skills on their resume, it's just very short-sighted goal because I would rather want to see my people in tech go far. Exactly, Mar- you know? yes. So I try to always tell people like, it's in your best interest to just keep it real when it comes to that. If you yeah. don't got it, just it's okay. Don't put it, you know, but like just make sure because you will be assessed. Yeah, one of the things I think I see a lot uh, from my community and a lot of people who follow me, and this isn't the majority, but this is enough people that it's a concern to me. I see a lot of people trying to find like the bare minimum that they can do to try to get in the industry. And it's like, okay, well, can I just do this? Can I, can I, okay, look, well, do I really have to get a certification? Do I really have to do this thing? And my mentality, when I see that personally, I'm like, yo, even if you get in the industry, that type of energy is not going to keep you here. Cause it's like, you're not competitive. You're just trying to get a high paying salary, work remote and trying to find the bare minimum you can do. And it's like, if you have that kind of mentality, I'm like, yeah, you might be able to finesse your way in, but it's like scaling or growing Dude. is like, so I so I love that you mentioned that, how you're like, yo, especially our community, people who, who look like us, it's like, yeah, we wanna see them in this industry, but we don't want them to, and I say this, I say this unashamedly, I don't want anyone in this industry that's gonna be a bad representation of us in this industry. Yeah. Because it's like, yo, if we want more of us to be in this industry and we want companies to continue to care about diversity and care about our communities, mm-hmm. it's like we can't just be like, yeah, just let's try to get like my cousin Ray Ray up up, up in the industry knowing that they don't have the work ethic, knowing that they're not consistent. So yeah. I guess what is that you being in the position of a of a of a recruiter, I'm sure that there is this one pressure on you as a there's one pressure on you as a black man where maybe people are are thinking, okay, yo, you you a brother, you gotta help us get in the industry. Yeah. But it's like maybe there's a there's a other pressure of like, yo, yeah. I can't just help all y'all get to the industry. So yeah. bro, like what what is that like, that type of heat that's on you? Man, it's it's I I'm glad you said that, man, because I was actually talking to a friend of mine yesterday about it. He's a he's a black engineer. Yeah. And me and him were talking about that. And I think we sell the dream, but we don't sell the journey. Oh, you know what I mean? And I think that that's need, a whole bar. Yeah, and I think we need to start educating people about the journey because what you see is the end product. Yeah. You see the me being black in tech. Yeah. The six-figure salary, the nice clothes, the jewelry, you see the car, right? And it's 100% attainable. Yeah, definitely. 100% but we skip over that and we sell our people a dream and a bill of goods and it's there and you can get it but what about the journey though yeah. are you are you preparing for that day mm-hmm. are you are you honing your skills like we talked about or do you do you have a do you have a github are you on hanker rank are you on leak code so hold up problems? hanker rank hold up now <laughs> i ain't never heard of hanker rank you know are you are yeah. you are you doing those things are you yeah. practicing are you honing your skills you know, are you getting certifications that make sense to where you're trying to go? Yeah. Are you just are you just a certification collector? Mm. Like you gotta, and it's nothing wow. wrong. It's nothing wrong with certifications, but like if you're trying to break into tech, you just got to be strategic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You got to know what you want to do before you get in. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, it's a journey, and I just want our people to know about the journey. Yeah, that's especially, so important. Especially if you're taking a non-traditional route, like because a lot of us. You know, I mean, there's many of us who didn't go do do a four year degree and get a computer yeah. computer science. So okay, so we don't have a, that traditional path. If you take a non traditional path, it may take a little longer, mm-hmm. and you may have to do a little bit more. But just be cognizant of the journey. Yeah. You know, and that's what I just want. That's why I said we we do we we sell the dream, but we don't sell the journey. And people need to know about the journey. Yo, I love that so much. Um, 
Look, y'all see a few different people from the uh, Patreon are here in the chat. Uh, if y'all haven't dropped any questions yet, please, uh, y'all, we are we're about we're about to start wrapping up this conversation. So go ahead and start posting your questions in the chat. Uh, really been enjoying this conversation uh, with Bobby here. This has been really really dope, uh, bro, man. That that last that last whole part is so important. I think that in and of itself could just be an entire conversation, entire discussion, just of the. The value of that, because one of the things I've seen, because I, I, I did a tech boot camp to break into tech mm -hmm. and many of my close friends have. And that's one of the things that in terms of my brand that I've kind of like told people like, yo, hey, for those of y'all that don't want to take do a four year four year uh, degree. Now, of course, m the, the roles I usually recommend are not high technical roles mm -hmm. because it's like, yeah, you can't do a one month, two month cybersecurity boot camp and be proficient as a cybersecurity engineer what you said right there you know you can't you can't do a a, a three month uh a full stack development boot camp <laughs> and be proficient it, it's like right. you can't but it's like could you do that for tech sales yeah that's possible again there's still things you have to come to the table with there are still certain things you have to speak to on your resume there's still other a lot a crap ton of other factors that they uh, come into it so usually those are some of the roles that i talk to people about Nevertheless, one of the things that I've still seen is I've seen a clear difference between the people who, like you mentioned with the strategy, people who have a strategy when it comes to getting into the industry, have a strategy in terms of them wanting to grow, them wanting to scale versus people that are just like, hey, I want to get in tech. What should I do? And I'm like, <laughs> have you I'm like, what I mean, what roles have you looked at? Yeah. I don't know. I want you to tell me. You, so you don't want to work in tech. You just want to make a lot of money, work remote. It, it, it's, it's like you don't really want to work in tech. You just want the money and you want to work from home and you think you're just going to kick your feet up this whole time. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so seeing that whenever I see those people, whether they do a boot camp, they get certifications or whatever route they go, they just show up at tech events. I'm able to see a clear difference between how long it either takes them to get into the industry, if they even get into the industry, mm -hmm. versus the others that are truly putting the work in. And yeah, I don't think people's initial desire to be in tech needs to be, oh, because I want to be a product manager or because I want to be in cybersecurity. But it's like, yo, you should at least be like, okay, I want to be in this industry because yeah, I see the glitz and glamour, but let me actually really focus on, let me choose something I actually want to do. Let me learn about it. Let yeah. me really see, okay, would I actually be passionate about this to a degree? Could I really see myself doing this? And then, yeah, like you mentioned, like lay out that strategy and mm -hmm. then think further. Don't just think, it's kind of like with boxing. I yeah. want to use a sports analogy. I love how you mentioned Kyrie Irving, but it's like boxers or fighters in general. It's like, you're not supposed to just think about hitting the object. You're supposed to think about punching through the object. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I truly, I've seen the people that aren't just thinking about how can I just get in tech, but they're making plans of like, man, I could see myself growing in that industry. I could see myself, yeah. you know, you know, for whatever reason, whether it's because they want to just climb the corporate ladder in this industry or because they want to grow and scale so that they could use that income to invest in something else. Yeah. I've just seen a clear difference even from my vantage point as a non-recruiter, <laughs> people who they just want to just kind of like do what they can do to just kind of just inch their way into the industry versus those that are like, yo, I, I'm coming up with a strategy and a plan. And even if that strategy and plan changes, because that happens with life, but those people that are like, yo, I really am trying to punch through. I, mm -hmm. I see the opportunity of what I can do in my personal life and in this industry. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you see that yeah, man. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, I mean, even in my career, man, I mean, I've seen people like non-tech want to break into tech, right? Mm -hmm. But there's so many ways to do that, right? So it's like you're you're trying really hard to be a back-end software engineer. Mm -hmm. And you're, you, you, you're doing the code, you're doing all the classes, but you're burning out, you're not successful in it. Yeah. But the reason is because maybe you're really a cybersecurity engineer. Oh. Maybe you're really a sales engineer. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're really a product manager. So like you don't have to be a technologist to be in tech. Yeah. And I think a lot of people they they you know they they, they read somewhere, or they saw somebody on TikTok who became a a back-end coder, but that was them. Yeah. That was their path. They figured out what they wanted to do before and they mm -hmm. worked towards that. That's why they were able to optimize the success. Yeah. That's why you see that success. So what what do you want to do? Yeah. 
you might not be uh, you might not want to do data structures and algorithms every day and I that, sure wouldn't. right and that's okay yeah. but maybe i want to sell a technical product mm -hmm. maybe i want to be a a, a a product manager or a product developer yeah you know so just think about that if, like maybe you might you're good with people yeah you know you can influence you're a great collaborator right yeah. so there's other ways you can break into that yeah i love that because that was how i chose i i, I laid because I, I didn't know a lot about the industry i knew i wanted to be in the industry and i knew i wanted to to get paid well in the industry because mm -hmm. of course most jobs in this industry pay well but there are definitely some jobs i'll be trying to tell people look don't just, just any jobs all of them don't pay exceptionally well right but i laid out hey what are the top 20 best paying jobs in tech mm -hmm. i looked at all of them and then i looked at the description of each role i watched vi videos on all of them and then i filtered it down to about four or five that i was like, okay i think i could do these mm -hmm. and i think that i would at least like mildly enjoy my job i won't hate my job i'll be fine with it and then yeah when i found for me the role that i chose sales engineering i was like yo i get to i get to demo i get to talk to mm -hmm. i like talking to people yeah. as i get to talk to people i'm a customer facing role I get to like do a presentation of the product. Like Eric knows, like my background is is doing you know poetry and, and breaking down like whether it's like you know theological topics or whatever. Mm -hmm. time. It's like yo, I love doing like breaking stuff down and giving an explanation to an audience. So it felt perfect for me. Right. But there's sometimes I there are a lot of people that hit me up and they're like, yeah, I'm doing a, I'm doing a sales engineering boot camp, and I'm like, okay, cool. Why did you choose that though? And they're like. Because I saw you doing it and, yeah. and it looks like it's cool. So I think I want to do it. And I'm like, but you don't even see what I do. Because I don't share videos of, of my work. Right. So I'm like, you just did it because you see I'm the only person you know this in tech. You see me doing this. So you're doing it. I'm like, that might not be wise for you to do. Exactly. And so yeah. I, I, I love that you mentioned that because that's incredibly important, um, especially someone in, in your position where you've seen people get in the industry. And you've seen people, you've seen people thrive, like you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure you've also seen some people where it's like they were kind of struggling or not really doing their best. Yeah, exactly, because they were thinking about other people's transferable skills and not their own transferable skills. Yeah, like what make what what are you good at? Mm -hmm. What what can what what do you bring to the table that the tech industry could utilize? Yeah. So and and that's what you did. So yeah, 100. percent Like I think that's important. Like just understanding. The transferable skills are a big thing. Just understanding what those are, mm -hmm. and then developing a roadmap. And if you need a, you know, somebody in the tech game to kind of guide you, if you need a career coach, that's the best way to go to kind of help you get through that and kind of guide that along. So yeah. yeah, I love it. And I know you provide a lot of different services. Uh, is that is the career coaching? Is that also something that that you assist people with as well? Yeah, yeah. So right now, like I do resume breakdowns, and like with my resume breakdowns, I basically go through and teach people what each section is yeah. like what it should be from okay. the summary section all the way down to the education section and then i go through and i make my recommendations on the, on on the spot i've actually had to rewrite a lot of summary sections off the bat Man. right and do all those different things that was i don't know if you saw but there was a young lady um who i did a resume re breakdown session with like a few weeks ago mm -hmm. she was very discouraged wow. about her um her prospects for jobs yeah she didn't have a summary section and I'm like, hey, your summary section is is key because yeah. it's gonna it does two things. One, it tells me it basically gives me a summary of your career, mm -hmm. just simple as that. But also, it gives me a summary of what I'm getting ready to see. And it's little things on resumes that matter. You might not think it does, but it does. Yeah. Help to come up with a summary section. She got six interviews now. Man. So now Let my so it. now I have to like okay, I need to reach back out like okay, how how can we get you set up? Like mm -hmm. let's do some interview some interview coaching and things like that so yeah yeah 